Welcome to the Educate, Empower, and Evolve podcast. My name is Haley Vera, and I'm a lifestyle coach with my roots in holistic nutrition, personal training, and yoga. I'm a total nerd with a huge passion for gut health and optimizing performance naturally. My mission with the E3 podcast is to help you acquire the knowledge that you need to evolve and reach the next level of yourself. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the E3 podcast. I'm your host, Haley Vera. And as always, I am excited to be here. I am not in my usual setting. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I look like I'm hanging out in a bedroom um, because I am. I'm actually hanging out in my boyfriend's parent place in Penticton. And if you listen to my last episode, which I'm sure was a little bit disjointed uh, because I was doing that episode. And like I mentioned on the last podcast, I love podcasting. It gives me a sense of peace. It gives me a sense of purpose. And it lets me do a little bit of a brain dump and share with you guys what's on my mind and also helps me to break down what I'm learning and some of the experiences that I'm going through as well. Um, But last week was a bit of a different week for me, a bit of a different beast. As I was doing the podcast, I was literally watching the smoke billowing up from a big fire behind the hill um, that was close to our house. And I think it started less than 10 kilometers away from us. Um, The wind was in our favor. So it actually blew the fire kind of like horizontally um, and also slightly away from us. But unfortunately, it blew it into a lot of other people's homes. So the fire did become very destructive. And if you're someone who lives in the Okanagan, in BC, or even just, you know, in Canada as a whole, I'm sure that you've heard a lot about the fires that have been incredibly destructive. And it hasn't just been the West Kelowna fire. Um, It's also been Adams Lake, and I know that Karameos has a big fire as well right now. There are so many places that are being impacted um, by the fires this year. It is, it's very sad, and I'm hoping that through this, that communities can come together, that we can seek support in one another, and that in some ways we can learn from this and understand that Everything is temporary and fleeting. And in, in a heartbeat, I would trade places with the families that have lost homes because let's let's be honest, you know, like it's me, Tyler, and Obi living in the condo, and we would be able to to relocate fairly easily. Uh, and I've moved so much over the past three years, actually the last probably 15 years of my life. I've, I've moved every couple of years. And so I don't have a lot of belongings, you know, I have a lot of clothes, but there's not a lot of things that I feel that are you know, of great value to me. And I know that for families that have children and they have so many things in their homes, you know, giving a giving a short evacuation notice that it would probably be very tough to be able to get everything out that they wanted. And I know there was a lot of am- animals impacted as well, which is really sad, not having time to evacuate all the animals. So I know as of right now, there's about 200 homes lost in, in Kelowna. Um, it's not just Kelowna, it's impacted some of the neighboring communities like Lake Country as well. Uh, It's funny, actually, because I don't usually get nervous about fires. You know, I've lived in BC my entire life. There's always fires every single year. We've had fires that have been close-ish to home, at least, and, you know, been on evacuation alert. But when this fire started and I saw that where it was on the map, I don't know. I just had this, like, sinking feeling in my stomach. It felt like there was a, a rock, like a heavy rock in my stomach. I felt nauseous at times, and I felt uncertain and I said to Tyler like I think we should I think we should leave and he's like oh you know it's you know we haven't been evacuated yet it's going to be fine the firefighters fighters will get it under control and at the time it was 300 hectares and I was like ah yeah I don't feel good about it I think that we should go so we did end up actually leaving our place before right after I finished that podcast we actually packed up and headed out the door um but the fire grew from 300 hectares to 1200 sorry, 1,200, 12,000 hectares. And I was right. It wasn't okay. It wasn't one of those fires that, you know, we got under control. There was heavy winds and it really, you know, the smoke from the fires themselves had impacted the firefighters ability, but we had 500 people on the ground, I believe, and like 14 helicopters. It was crazy. So I just want to start off this podcast by saying thank you to all of the humans out there who are fighting fires. A thank you to all of the people who are running respite for the evacuees. We are fortunate enough to have Tyler's parents 45 minutes away where we can hang out um, and we're still able to work. I feel very grateful for that. A lot of people are not able to work and, and not able to go home. And so great, 
grateful to be in a position where I can still work, still podcast, um, still support my clients and still support myself financially through this. So I know that there's a lot of, um, a lot of impact that's still going to be, you know, we haven't really unpacked it the the full effect of what's happened yet um it's still underway the fire has not been deemed in control as of yet uh, our evacuation order has gone back to an evacuation alert so we could go home but the water is not drinkable and the smoke and the air quality has been so harmful to people that Tyler and I have just chosen to stay here for a couple more days until the fire is deemed as within control um also we are gym junkies so <laughs> the gym is shut down because of the air quality uh, and it's also right on the evacuation um, the evacuation order line. It's on evacuation alert, it's not on order, but the gym owners have um, very thankfully actually, they have taken into consideration the health of their members and decided that it's not healthy to work out in those circumstances. So we are fortunate to have a gym here and we're probably going to stay here until our gym reopens because it's uh working from home it's like our one little get out for the day get out to the gym so we have world gym him here and grateful for that and just sending love and light and best wishes to the families that are going through this um i would trade places with some of those families in a heartbeat because i know there's so many people out of home but Anyways, if you're on this podcast or listening to this podcast today, I just encourage you to, you know, share a little bit of that love and gratitude for where you are and your life. And if you're one of the people that has been impacted, then my heart goes out to you. Um, and we're in this together. So today's podcast, we're actually going to be talking about life lessons. And I talked about one of the life lessons last week. This week, I want to talk about the second lesson um, that I shared in my presentation at our second annual client retreat, which was amazing. I was so grateful for the amount of people that we had there and the impact that we had as well. Um, there were so many people coming up to me at the end of the retreat and giving me hugs and tears, happy tears, tears of self-realization and insight and purpose and power. And it was so, it was so fascinating and so powerful to see what vulnerability can do. And so the second lesson that I'm going to share with you today is, is one that I learned the hard way. And there's actually six of them. And the sixth, I'm not going to podcast on because I've already podcasted on it. And if you've listened to a couple previous episodes, I podcasted on Mata Mata, which is this idea that you're not done yet. Um, and if you're one of the people that always is like, I'll be happy when, right? I'll be happy when I lose this number of pounds or when I have this house or when I have a family then this idea of Mata Mata of you're not done yet could potentially feel disheartening. But if you're someone who can embrace the process and trust the journey and just really understand that life is, is about like reaching those next levels of yourself and that you're never going to be perfect, but it's this pursuit of everything that we desire in our health, in our wealth, in our relationships that uh, can keep us on this path of growth and discovery. So I love this idea of Mata Mata, uh, but it's just, it's, is the sixth concept that I shared there. So I'm not going to be sharing that one on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, I strongly encourage you to go back and listen to it. Today, we're going to be talking about how if you're not willing to work through your pain, the people around you are the ones who feel it. I think we've all heard the saying, like, hurt people hurt people. Uh, it sounds pretty cliche, uh, but there's profound truth in it. And I know that for myself, this was a truth. And I hurt many people in my life very unintentionally. At the time, it may have been, you know, um, an unintentional word or something that came out. Uh, but I'm going to talk through that with you guys and just share how we can work through pain. And if you're someone who's experienced extreme trauma, sexual, sexual abuse, loss, grief, uh, you know, anything around that um, addiction, then I think, you know, having a counselor, having a therapist, doing hypnotherapy, speaking to someone that is outside of your immediate social circle, someone that has an objective opinion and can give you different insights and the support that you need to work through that will be really important, especially if you're someone who hasn't worked through your trauma um, and you haven't worked through your pain. I think that's starting um, in a place where you feel safe and secure is really important. So like I said, I hurt many people unintentionally, but some of these people I love very much, including my parents and siblings, because I didn't work through the pain that I went through in my uh, late teens and early 20s. 
I thought that by escaping the pain, by avoiding it, I would be able to hide it from other people. But the truth is that when we try to escape it, we end up masking it. And it remains as like this unresolved pain. But unresolved pain is like a landslide. It leaves a wake of destruction and further damage in its past. So if we don't deal with the unresolved pain, it has this landslide effect where it takes out everything in its wake and comes with you through your life. So as as someone who struggled with disordered eating, um, a lot of that actually stemmed from where I actually talked a lot about this at the retreat. And then I was kind of questioning myself as to how much I was going to share on the podcast, but I'm going to share as much as I possibly can, because I want to be vulnerable with my audience and help you guys to understand that I'm human. Um, and so the, the eating disorders actually stemmed from a conversation that I had with my surgeon. Um, so I had a breast reduction when I was 17, the year that I graduated high school, right before graduation, I think a couple of months before I had this surgery. And I went back to my surgeon um, a few months later and expressed to him that I wasn't happy because I'd asked him to be an A cup and I was still a C. And I blamed um, my chest size for uh, so sexual abuse that I had undergone when I was about 15. And the doctor just said to me, you know what, if you want your boobs to be smaller, maybe you should just lose some weight. At the time, I was around 135 pounds, to put that in perspective, I'm 150 now, and I'm around 20% body fat. So I was by no means unhealthy or overweight. And he told me that I should lose weight. And so this is coming from a surgeon who I saw as an important, powerful person. And I did everything that I could to lose weight. But at the same time, I resented him and hated him for what he'd said to me because it resulted in me inflicting damage and pain on myself. Um, disordered eating, over-exercising, abusing my body. And when I look back at that, you know, I was trying to mask my pain. It's like, if you're over there, far away from me, you're not going to see how bloodshot my eyes are from throwing up in the toilet. You're not going to see how painful my throat is or hear my voice crack because I've been bulimic for the last three years. If you're over there, you're not going to see the imperfections or flaws on my face or the fact that I struggled with acne for five years and have terrible scarring. If you're standing over there, you're not going to see the insecurities that I feel are so destructive to my confidence and esteem. But if I can keep you at an arm's length or further, you're not going to see the pain. And I learned from a very young age that if I was aggressive and mean, that people stayed away. And that wasn't a healthy way to cope with it. But like I said, there was some sexual trauma that I experienced in my early teens. And I never told my parents, I actually didn't tell my parents until I was in my early 20s. But I stopped hugging my dad and he didn't know why. And that caused him so much hurt. And I remember one day that there was tears in his eyes when he said to me, like, why don't you hug me anymore? But I didn't know how to tell him because I was afraid of hurting him. But the truth is I was hurting him by not telling him. And so for many years, I would lash out. I would say hurtful things because acting out meant people would give me more space and leave me alone. And it wasn't intended to hurt them. At the time, it was rather to like protect them because I didn't want them to see my pain or know what I'd been through or know how I was truly feeling. So if I kept them away from me, I thought I wasn't hurting them. But that in itself was hurtful. So when we go through traumatic events or setbacks or heartbreaks or we're struggling with something internally, the pain doesn't stop with us. Our reactions, our behaviors, our attitudes ripple outward, and that impacts the people around us in subtle and not so subtle ways. So when we're talking about unresolved pain, oftentimes it's manifesting as anger, irritability, addictions, frustration, withdrawal, or aggression. And we wear this like mask to try and hide the hurt, but it's not an impenetrable mask. The people that are often closest to us are the ones that are wearing the brunt of that emotional shrapnel. And our pain quickly turns into their pain and it creates this vicious cycle of hurt that can be challenging to break. Like I said, hurt people hurt people. And when that person's hurt, they're going to inflict more hurt, maybe towards you or maybe towards other people. It might not be physical, but it could be mental or emotional. Now, the secondhand kind of smoke analogy, secondhand pain is very unintended, is an unintended consequence of those in close proximity to us. And it's like growing up as a child with distant or angry parents, right? The spouses feel that kind of, emotional detachment from their partner 
um, or colleagues tiptoe around, you know, irritable coworkers. It's this pain that we feel that might not be direct, but it's having such an impactful and profound ripple effect in our immediate social circle. But that goes way beyond your immediate social circle. You know, if you have um, an argument or you're hurtful to someone in your life, who's to say that person isn't going to go out today and have a negative interaction with someone at the grocery store or when they're driving because they have been hurt and now they are passing that on. So I think that it's really important when we're healing from pain to take the time to actually acknowledge what we've been through. And I really started to not just look at the pain that I'd been through, but embrace it. And it's not an easy thing to do. Sometimes it can feel like you're hugging a hedgehog at first, like, oh, I'm really going to embrace the fact that I've been through this. But once we once we can learn to work through the pain and suffering, we'll understand that a lot of it carries important lessons. It helps us to learn what we value. It helps us to create a vision of what we don't want in our life so that we can attract um, the right people and the right experiences into our world to be able to live our best life. So you're not going to be able to go through life avoiding all uncomfortable, painful, hurtful experiences. It's just not possible. But if you can start to work through the pain as it happens, it will be less and less destructive and be less of a landslide in your life. So when I look back at what I've been through with doctors and with um, misprescribed you know, antibiotics and with sexual um, abuse and with the own pain that I inflicted on myself from that and from how I felt about my body, when I look back at all of that, I see that that pain has turned into passion. It's turned into what I've pursued in my life in a career where I coach people on their lifestyle. And I can understand, you know, the emotional connection between pain and trauma and food and pain and trauma and exercise, because sometimes we'll start to try and mask our pain, even through going into the gym to quote unquote, let our frustration out. And while that may at first keep you going, it's not going to be sustainable long term, and it's still not dealing with the root of the issue. I believe that pain is a massive catalyst for personal growth and self-development because it can be like the ignition to the fire, right? But it's not going to keep the fire burning. It's going to get it started. And once we start to understand what we value, what we seek, what it it, the vision is that we hold for ourselves for the future that is what keeps us in momentum and keeps the fire going long term and keeps us uh you know in this place of growth and self-development so when we talk about healing the role of empathy and understanding is key our relationships will often act as mirrors and they'll reflect back what we put out um, so when we're unwilling to address and work through a pain, we might unintentionally create an environment of tension or mistrust or detachment. And they, the people around us can sense that something is off, even if they can't quite put their finger on it, like my dad not understanding why I didn't want to give hugs, or my partner recognizing right away that my first uh, reaction to being uncomfortable was anger, because it would push people away so they couldn't see the insecurity. So for those of you who do receive secondhand pain, empathy can be really powerful. You can recognize that someone's erratic behavior might be a cry for help or a manifestation of past trauma. And we don't want to necessarily nurture them in that and tell them it's okay. But sometimes instead of reacting back and mirroring their pain, we can hold a mirror up in front of them and say, hey, you know, this is how you're behaving. This is what's going on. Do you want to talk about it? And if you don't, that's okay. But that's not something that I'm willing to tolerate right now and not something that I'm going to be um, participating in. And setting those boundaries can help protect you, um, but also help you to understand them and give them the opportunity to open up to you. And my partner's done that to me numerous times where he's like, hey, look, I'm holding this mirror up for you. I think that you need to see this. And then we can have that open conversation and open dialogue that can be so healing. So the first step to breaking the cycle is not having someone else hold a mirror up to you. It's really just the self-awareness of when I'm angry, do I understand why? Because am I really angry about someone cutting me off in traffic? Am I truly angry that, you know, my partner left the fridge open? <laughs> or is there something deeper? You know, is there something that goes back a long time and I am just finding and seeking reasons in my life to push people away from me or be angry, be irritable, um, cause hurt or inflict hurt because we're hurting I think that a lot of times when people are uncomfortable about their bodies, maybe they're uncomfortable with their body image or how they're feeling about their body or how their clothing are fitting, 
and someone else is on a fitness journey or looks good in front of them, they may poke fun at you for being on a fitness journey. They may make fun of you for eating healthy because the truth is that they're in pain. <clears throat> they're unhappy with their body. They're unhappy with their inability to stick to, um, you know, showing up for themselves. They're frustrated with how they feel. And so they'll take that out on you by making fun of you for being healthy. And I've felt that on numerous occasions. So it's those people that are hurting that will try and hurt you. And I think that self-awareness and awareness of others in that and awareness of your own reaction to other people that are being hurtful is important. If you can take a step back and just recognize what's going on, remove yourself from that, we'll be able to get closer to the root of the problem. When you're so muddled up and mixed up in the emotions, it's really hard. So stepping back from the emotions, acknowledge the emotion and then step back from that. And I call it the big mind, small mind. Small mind is like all of the emotions, all the chaos, all the clutter. But your big mind is where you're like, okay, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling anger. I'm feeling irritable. I'm feeling resentment. Cool. Take a step out from that. Why? Why am I feeling that way? My, you know, my partner accidentally left the fridge open. Okay. That's not a big deal, but why am I actually feeling that? Okay. I feel like that person is neglectful and isn't caring about our environment at home. And leaving the fridge open was kind of a dumb example, but you guys get it. Right. And then we go back from that. Okay. So now I'm feeling that they're neglectful. Where in the past have I been neglected? Can I forgive that person, that experience, that thing, and understand that I value my home environment, my space. Um, I value respect. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. I feel disrespected. Okay, cool. Now I can go to my partner and be like, Hey, look, you know what? I had a very, uh, you know, terrible past relationship where I was disrespected on all levels and neglected. And so in some ways, when you leave the fridge open, I feel like that's neglecting me because it's neglecting X, Y, Z. And again, the fridge was not the best idea, but you guys get this idea, right? Of being able to keep going back and peeling back the layers and getting to this place of, okay, this is where it started. And I'm going to do another episode entirely on forgiveness uh, because it's so important on your fitness journey. If you're operating on your fitness journey from a place of like, you know, fuck you energy, past relationship that were painful, people that have hurt you, people that have shamed your body. It's really hard to actually have a healthy relationship with self. So forgiveness is the first place to start. And that's an important part of this healing journey as well. And I'm going to be talking about that um, uh, as one of these lessons in healing. So that's going to be coming up soon. So being able to develop self-awareness is, is key, peeling back those layers and then recognizing, you know, the impact of our pain on others. It's equally crucial to understand that healing is a personal journey. You can't fix that person in pain. And if you do, you might have more pain inflicted on you. So like I said, setting those boundaries, hey, you know what? That's not language I'm willing to tolerate. I'm not going to say negative things back to you or yell back. I'm just going to say like, hey, I don't tolerate when you speak to me like that. And if you want to continue speaking to me like that, I'm like, there's the door or I'm going to walk out that door, right? It's like, we start to set those boundaries for ourselves. And I think that, you know, therapy, counseling, self-health avenues, or just starting this process, right? By starting with self-awareness can really help with our interactions and healing our relationships so that we no longer have this vicious cycle of hurt. Um, pain, you guys, is a part of life, but if we let it go unaddressed. It does fester. It doesn't just harm you. It harms the people that you care about. And so by confronting that, seeking healing and nurturing your relationship, um, you can truly transform your life and the lives of the people around you as well. So I hope that this podcast was impactful for you. And if it was, pop into my Instagram DMs and let me know. I would love to hear from you. Um, You can find me on Instagram. It's Hayley Vera Fitness and it's H-A-Y-L-E-Y. Hope you guys are having an incredible day. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Peace, love, and personal growth. And we'll be catching you on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode on the E3 podcast. I had so much fun sharing my knowledge with you, and I hope that you enjoyed today's show. If you found value in this episode, the number one thing that you can do to support the show is share this episode on your social media platforms or leave a review. If you'd like to find out about the lifestyle programs I offer online, go to healthpillars.ca and click apply today to fill out an application for coaching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Peace, love, and personal growth.